Council. If you would kindly join me in a salute to our flag. The, um, the town council has been made aware of the recent uh, passing of several uh, veterans in the town. And uh, I think we would um, like to pay a moment of respect uh, with respect to those individuals. Um, firstly, uh, we're aware that Mr. Manuel de Souza Figueredo uh, had passed on December 12th of 2022. Mr. Figueredo served in company B 701st Maintenance Battalion, 1st Infantry Division, uh, United States Army during the Vietnam War. Uh, additionally, we are aware of the passing of, um, of Mr. Uh, Paul Jude O'Brien Sr. on the 13th of December, 2022. Mr. O'Brien served in Company B, 2nd Battalion, 2nd Armored Division, 5th U.S. Army, United States Army during the Vietnam War. And finally, we are aware that uh, Ms. Anne M. Boudreau uh, had passed on December 20th, 2022. Ms. Boudreau served in the United States Navy during the Gulf War. Uh, to commemorate the passing of those uh, veterans of our town, I ask that you please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. I'd like to make everyone aware that this um, meeting this evening is being aired live and recorded for future broadcast. Uh, the first item of our agenda is the approval of minutes from the council meeting of December 20th, 2022. I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The, uh, the council this evening will be electing uh, uh, new officers and uh, first of all, we'll be, we'll be swearing in newly elected councilors who were elected on, at our special town election on Saturday, January 7th. And uh, in that regard, I'd like to ask that we welcome to the council this evening, the two of the councilors who are with us, uh, Mr. Brad McKinnon, and uh, Mark Lindy, um, we welcome you. We congratulate you on your election victory. Uh, we're very pleased to see you joining us here on the council. Uh, Ms. Susie Robinson was also elected on the, uh, at the election on Saturday. Uh, she was not able to attend this evening, uh, but we look forward to seeing her uh, at our next meeting later in the month. Uh, so this evening we will be uh, witnessing the swearing in of the new councilors. We'll also conduct an election for the president of the council and vice president. Uh, the terms of those two officers uh, will serve until um, just following the annual town election at the end of April. Uh, so it's a short term, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the duties involved are very significant and we uh, appreciate the willingness of everyone available here to uh, consider serving in those roles. So at this point, I'd like to ask if our town clerk, uh, Marilee Hunt, would care to commence her process of swearing in of the new councilors? Certainly, it's my pleasure. Um, I would ask you all to stand. You're all being sworn in tonight. Yeah. And I would ask you to raise your strong hand, whichever one that is. And if you'll repeat after me. I, and state your name. I, Mark Lindy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will serve the people of the town of Bridgewater. I will serve the people of the town of Bridgewater. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Creating and upholding. Creating and upholding. The town code, ordinances, orders, and resolutions. The town code, orders, 
orders and resolutions. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And the laws of the United States of America. And the laws of the United States of America. I further vow. I further vow. To faithfully represent. To faithfully represent. The citizens of Bridgewater. The citizens of Bridgewater. Regardless of color, gender, or religion. Regardless of color, gender, or religion. Honoring their faith and trust in me. Honoring the faith and trust in me. I will make myself available to hear. I will make myself available to hear. And when possible and appropriate. And when possible and appropriate. To act upon. To act upon. The concerns presented to me. The concerns presented to me. I will serve the town council with diligence. I will serve the town council with diligence. Faithfully attending. Faithfully attending. Both council and committee meetings. Both council and committee meetings. This is my sacred oath. This is my sacred oath. Given today. Given today. To the people of Bridgewater. To the people of Bridgewater. Thank you very much and congratulations on your election. I have papers out here. We signing the book too, or is this a place of the book? The book? Shirley, are we signing the book too tonight or no? <laughs> oh, okay. So now we are going to elect a president for this sitting council. Do I hear nominations? I'd like to nominate Fred Chase as president. Second. Fred Chase, second, nominate and second. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, uh, Fred Chase going once, going twice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Mr. Chase, I will hand it over to you for the election of the vice president. Thank you very much. Uh, for the office of vice president, I would entertain uh, nominations for that position. I'd, I'd like to nominate um, Eric Moore for vice. I'll second that. Thank you very much. We have a nomination for Eric Moore, um, who is the current Vice President of the Council. Are there any further nominees? And seeing none, could I ask all in favor of the nomination uh, of Eric Moore for Vice President of the Council, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Thank you very much and congratulations, Councilor Moore. Okay, now we'll seat the Council. You see there are numbers on all your um, posts there. And we can pass that around by. Do you, do you all have pens? Okay. As you get up and move or switch seats, you can sign the big book. Carlton will put it up there. And what you do is you you sign it, you you print and sign and write town the first person to write town council. Everybody else can do ditto marks under that if you'd like. Now for the seating, for those who haven't done this before. Um, 
<laughs> I've seen this trick before. What's the joker? There's a joker. So, <laughs> so, so where does where does this one sit, Merrily? Merrily, where does this one sit? It says nine. Is there a nine in front? No, I mean, Frank's are short. Close. Yeah. Kevin. These kinds of comments will start with me. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. Always looking at the plus, right? <laughs> I knew I was gonna be sitting. I told you I was gonna be sitting. <laughs> okay, so just in case we have any questions, I brought my copy. Have Debbie order, Debbie's got to order some for the new counselors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of like the first day of school, huh? <laughs> Can you go right. next? The um, next item on our agenda, uh, proclamations that we have no proclamations to announce this evening. We could move directly to citizen open forum. If there are citizens who would care to address the council, I invite you to kindly step forward to the podium, uh, state your name and street, and uh, please limit your remarks to no more than three minutes. Are there any citizens who care to address the council? 
Seeing none. We'll move on to next. Appointments. We do have one appointment to consider this evening. Uh, it is the proposed appointment of uh, Mr. Mark Thomas to the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, I note the fact that um, uh, Mr. Thomas has a considerable experience in coaching and uh, serving as a board member uh, for the Bridgewater Youth Soccer Association and also has served as a Little League coach in the town. And I would entertain a motion for approval of his uh, nomination uh, to the Parks and Recreation Commission um, for the period of uh, for the period of three years. So 2020. Uh, I'm sorry for the period of three years. Uh, so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. A, a, if we would all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Seeing none. I thank you very much and congratulations to Mr. Thomas. We thank you for your uh, ability to come forward to serve the town in this manner. We uh, have one licensing, uh, we have no uh, hearings this evening, but we have one licensing transaction to consider. This is in the matter of uh, petition P2023-018, the granting of a class one used auto dealers license uh, to the applicant Lucini Truck Sales LLC located at 900 Elm Street. And um, I will open the public hearing in this matter. The time is now 716. I would ask if there are any general questions from the public with respect to this proposed licensing. Any general questions from members of the public? Seeing none. Is any member of the public here to speak in favor of this matter? Yes, sir, please step forward. If I may. My name is Jim Burke, I'm an attorney at law with offices at 48 North Pearl Street in Brockton, Massachusetts. And I have a pleasure to represent uh, Bill Lucini and the Lucini family for a number of years. There's a request uh, before the board to, uh, to counsel uh, to authorize the issuance of a class one license for uh, basically uh, heavy rig commercial truck sales. Uh, I believe there are three issues that might be relevant to the uh, council in making its determination. One, whether or not there has in fact been a distribution agreement executed by a manufacturer. That document is before you, I believe. There's been a uh, distribution agreement uh, executed with uh, Autocar, which is a leader in the commercial truck industry. Uh, the, uh, uh, the vehicles that uh, um, Lucini truck or Lucini would be selling are in fact uh, large scale commercial rigs for 10, 12, 14, 18 wheel vehicles. Uh, and uh, the uh, generally run around a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, so they are not your typical showroom vehicles. Uh, the utilization would be done basically on road sales. There would uh, be a facility of course at 900 Elm Street, which is the site of Lucini uh, bus lines. They have a, a, a full, uh, offices along with a very large uh, repair and maintenance facility of the 11,000 square feet within the repair and maintenance facility, approximately 3,000 square feet would be dedicated to auto car for repairs and warranty work. It's expected they'll have approximately uh, three uh, employees, uh, one uh, road sales and two involved uh, in fact the uh, uh, licensing uh, and uh, distribution sales contracts. Uh, you have a uh, facility at 900 Elm Street, which is one of your concerns and criteria, which has to be a proper facility. I submit in the industrial area that it sits, uh, the fact that you will not get a large influx of uh, cross traffic, rather you'll have a very boutique sales to individuals in the construction and the commercial distribution industry, uh, and whether or not uh, the, you have a uh, operator who is in fact proper under the statute. I'd suggest that the uh, Lucini name is appropriate uh, for your consideration. Uh, Bill uh, ran Lucini Motors with his family for many generations. Uh, that uh, Ford uh, dealership was on the Bridgewater, West Bridgewater line. Uh, as part of that facility, uh, his specialty was the sale of uh, uh, commercial trucks. From there, when uh, Lucini uh, ceased its operation, uh, he uh, had an engagement and 
a arrangement with uh, Auto Star, with the Western Star, uh, which is uh, a manufacturer of a like and similar uh, grade of vehicle. Now he has a opportunity and has been uh, approached by and requested to enter into a distribution agreement with Autocar. So I believe uh, members of the uh, uh, council that uh, we have a, a, an appropriate uh, facility, we have an appropriate operator, uh, and we have a, a good business model for the uh, town of Bridgewater. And we'd ask your consideration in improving the class one license. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And Mr. Lucini is here. And he, of course, would be more than pleased to answer any questions you may have. President? Thank you. Yes, uh, <coughs> Councilor. Thank you to the uh, attorney. Thank you very much. Just question, I'm looking at the petition. There's nothing in here for Saturday. Are they going to be open on Saturdays? Uh, hours of operation. Uh, Bill, is it? Saturday's still, Saturday still noon. OK. Do we have to include this in the petition since it's not on here? OK. Um, I can amend this, correct? I'll make a motion to amend to add Saturday. What are the hours going to be, Mr. Lucini? 7 to 12? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. to 12 p.m.? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Councilor. Uh, thank you. Uh, just one thing I, I imagine would be more of a Scribner's error, but it's listing at the top of the petition, class one used auto dealer's license. I think that should be changed to class one new auto dealer's license. That's class one is for new cars only and class two would be for use. So I would make the motion just to change that to new car license as opposed to use. We have a motion and a second uh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No one, thank you. Are there further questions? Seeing none, uh, I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are there any members of the public here to speak in opposition to the petition? Any member of the public wishing to oppose this application? I see none. Are there further questions from the town council? I see none. I would entertain a, um, I will close the hearing. Uh, it is 722 and I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. And that application is approved. We thank you very much. Congratulations. We're very happy to see the business uh, coming to the town. Thank you. Uh, we have no presentations uh, this evening. The next item of business would be the town manager's report. And uh, the town manager will uh, update us on the fire station project. Uh, Mr. Dutton, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a, a very brief update, um, just to give, get you uh, up to speed. The uh, survey, the land survey is underway um, for the fire at the fire station property. The wetland delineation has been done, I think, as the council knows. Um, and the design work is uh, still will be progressing from now until hopefully uh, September, October, when it will be completed. Um, and then we can uh, go out and do the bid process for construction at that point. But uh, we're well on our way there. Um, I expect the OPM will be uh, beginning regular project meetings, uh, probably not weekly, but uh, at least every two or three weeks uh, sometime over the next month. So we're well on our way uh, and just ready to get it done. So that's really all I have on the fire station, but I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dutton. Are there questions for the town manager? I see none at the moment. I thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, discussions, we have no discussion scheduled for this evening. Uh, is there any uh, committee that wishes to deliver a committee report to the council? I see none. We can move right to legislation for action. First item for business is order FY23-038, appropriation for eminent domain taking uh, for Summer Street property. Uh, this relates to the uh, former mobile station located at 46 Summer Street. And uh, I would um, turn the discussion over to the town manager. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this request is for an appropriation um, recommended by the Community Preservation uh, Committee <clears throat> for, um, sorry, it's not right in front of me, 300, I believe it's 313,000 and change um, that goes uh, in, uh, coupled with the amount that is, uh, the council has uh, appropriated prior 245,000, uh, the remainder of the 245,000 the council had appropriated. Um, to uh, fund the taking and the ancillary costs uh, for the property at 446 uh, Summer Street. Um, as the, most of the council knows, new members may not know, this has been in front of the council for a period of years now. And we are finally at the point where the uh, appropriation and the uh, order of taking can come together and affect the, uh, the actual taking. Uh, for those that have not been following this, I'll just give you a quick update. The um, intent of the town after the taking is to incorporate this pro property uh, into, essentially into or, or a complement to the Flora Little Park, which is a private park uh, run and owned by the Bridgewater Improvement Association uh, right next door. So we'll have a, an in-town park. Um, my hope is that uh, once the design is complete, we'll be able to uh, fund the uh, construction of outdoor uh, I'll call it passive recreation, but it's uh, chess, checkers, um, a gathering area uh, suitable for, you know, bringing lunch, uh, potentially a, a place to park a food truck, um, and those, those types of amenities for residents and, uh, and as well as staff and students at Bridgewater State. Um, so this is the first uh, piece. There's two steps to this process, uh, as is the case with any eminent domain taking, you'll vote the appropriation first and then you vote, vote the order of taking. Uh, town attorney has, uh, once the uh, votes are effective, 30 days after uh, you vote it, the town attorney then has 30 days after that in which to record um, and arrange uh, for, for what are referred to as damages paid to the, uh, either the owner uh, or the lien holders of the property uh, based upon what we were just talking about it. Based on my last review, there are plenty of lien holders on the property. So we'll sort that out. That's something that we do after, after the taking and after we're all done with the recording. Um, actually, that, I shouldn't say we, that's something Jason does uh, after the recording of the property uh, is all done. So uh, <clears throat> once that 30 days elapses and once we've recorded, uh, our intent is to clean up that property, do a very basic cleanup, um, just making it look a little present, more presentable, taking the sign down uh, or what's left of the sign down. And then after that, um, we have an, a landscape architect who's uh, ready to do the final design based upon the condition of the uh, building and also um, the, uh, the uh, topographic nature of the property. So, so we're, we're ready to go otherwise. Uh, but anyway, going back to the appropriation, this, uh, this funds the appropriation. The amount uh, of the taking is 457000 which is actually a little uh, less than it was uh, about six months ago. So that's a good sign. I hope nobody recommends that we wait longer because maybe the price will go down, but um, chances are it won't. Um, but in any case, we're, we're ready to go, but happy to answer questions if anybody has questions. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Just to, uh, on the appropriation order, oh, I'm sorry. Just a counsel, quick question. Um, cost of, uh, is there an underground tank that needs to be removed? Is that all factored in? Uh, great question. Um, there is no underground tank. Tanks have all been removed. Um, one of the items that we did spend money on uh, prior to uh, today is making sure that the site was clean. Uh, all the records have been reviewed. There are voluminous records on that property, um, monitoring wells, as well as uh, tank removals, and all of that is very well documented. So, so we're in good shape. Thank you. In case we have further questions, we'll, we'll first, uh, I'm, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, discussion, yes, Councillor Wood. A um, couple items. Um, this, this is the second reading, although in the packet it doesn't say it's second reading. That's correct. This right, is so it's eligible to be voted on. Uh, the second thing is, I don't know the result of the finance uh, committee meeting, but in the budget and finance, we met last night and we uh, voted three, three to zero to recommend passage of this. Thank you very much. Other further questions with respect to this matter? And seeing none, 
Uh, we have a motion and a second. Do we know the results of the FinCon? I, I can't. 5-0. Oh. Yeah. 5-0 on the bottom of the page. It's on the sheet? I don't see it on the sheet. I'm looking. I'm just looking at what you mailed oh, us earlier. It's on the agenda. Okay. Uh, moving to a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Seeing none. And the measure is approved. I thank you very much. Uh, following is the eminent domain order itself. This is order FY22-019, eminent domain order for taking of Summer Street property. Uh, this has been brought forward by Councillor George. Uh, uh, Councillor, if you have comments. Um, no, I believe we're going to be acting on this to send to advertising. Am I correct on that? I, this will be- that is, that is correct. We haven't sent it no, to- uh, We are- Did we already send it to advertising? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then we'll need to no, at least notate on the order that this is for final okay. approval. Okay. I forgot if we did it last time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion and a second. And I would ask for all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I see none. Thank you so much. Moving on to order FY23-039, transfer order, Bridgewater Housing Authority window replacement project. Uh, I would uh, ask uh, if um, Mr. Dutton, if you have comments. Yes, Mr. President, the uh, committee preservation uh, committee recommended uh, the expenditure of $363,000 out of the housing reserve account. Um, again, I will add that for those that uh, are unaware, the uh, community preservation has three main buckets that it puts some money into and then um, a, a different reserve account with a lot of money, uh, the remainder of the money in it. So the revenues come from uh, both local taxes um, as well as state matches. And uh, in this case, the 363,000 is coming from the housing reserve account. Uh, and its purpose is to replace uh, windows at uh, Helm, uh, Hemlock Drive, uh, 672 to two. Um, and um, the, I can certainly answer questions. Colleen Darty, uh, who is uh, a interim director of the Housing Authority, is here. If if there are any specific questions, but I can answer any questions concerning the appropriation. Certainly, I would actually. The, if, it, um, if it's appropriate, would you like to come up and add anything? Actually, Since you're here, yes, I hate to bring you all the way down and not uh, give you the opportunity uh, to speak. Um, thank you. Um, my name is Colleen Doherty. Um, I am the director of the Bridgewater Housing Authority, um, and we would be very excited to receive this funding. Um, the Housing Authority is a state-funded housing authority through the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, there is never enough funding um, to do the items that we need to do. Um, on top of that, we are constantly hit with emergencies as our piping is older. Um, so we were hit with quite a few emergencies over the last year. Um, of course, Mark is aware of these from the Housing Authority Board, but we certainly dealt with a large sewer break um, at this exact property um, and a few other um, interim items that had to be addressed immediately. Um, so one of the items, though, on our five-year plan that we would like to see addressed are these windows um, you know, at the Hemlock site, um, which really is... Um, some of our most vulnerable population and it would go a long way for them to have new windows. These are original windows to the site. These windows are long past their useful life. Um, and a lot of times if we can um, tap into some CPA funds locally, we can also use that to maybe leverage other grant funds. Um, so one of you know, my tasks um, from the board is to definitely investigate every funding opportunity. Um, so if there are ways for us to leverage these dollars, we would do that. Um, so I thank you for your time and certainly open to answering any questions you may have. Other questions from the council? Yes, Dr. Hunt. Thank you. I'm on Austin Street. I'm the chair of this community preservation. <clears throat> we voted to approve or recommend this to you. I will remind the council this is not a maintenance project. Community preservation money cannot pay for maintenance. 
It's a restoration project. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would entertain a uh, motion for approval. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. Thank you. Discussion? Question. Council. Question through the chair to the town council. Yes. I just want to make sure I just had, I resigned earlier tonight from the housing authority to be sworn in to this body. Can I vote on this? Yes, because you did resign. Uh, I believe you resigned and led town clerk, so yes. you should be fine. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you both. Uh, further questions? From the council, council of no, just discussion. So uh, again, the budget and, and finance committee met last night and, and uh, recommended approval of this. Thank you very much. Further questions? I see none. I would ask all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Thank you very much. We have no old business. We do have several items under new business this evening. The first item is. Order FY23-040, Certified Assessor's Compensation. This refers to um, uh, incentive compensation to be paid for the professional education advancement of certified assessors. And I would uh, turn it over briefly, if I could please, to Mr. Dutton for comment. Thank you, Mr. President. This uh, is uh, an acceptance of state law, which uh, grants a, a slight bump in pay for certified assessors. Uh, our assessor is um, well certified uh, and, and recently achieved uh, the designation that, uh, that I'm requesting uh, that you adopt the state law for. Um, so that's pretty much all I have, but I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. We have a motion uh, and a second. This is first reading. First reading, I believe, has got to go to committee. It's going to committee. I'm sorry, this we referred to the budget of finance and finance committees. Uh, I'll make that motion. So we have a motion and a second. Yes, second. second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Thank you very much. Order FY23 041, acceptance of non recurring revenue to capital. And uh, once again, please, Mr. Dutton. Sorry, I'm, uh, you're going too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> this never happens. <laughs> is this what the next year is gonna be like? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, doo -doo. Yep. This is the um, uh, state mitigation funding for. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. This uh, is uh, commonly known as prison mitigation. Uh, it's it's significantly less than we have received in prior years, based on the we believe based on the population. We're still trying to find out exactly why, but based on the population figures uh, at the uh, facility. But it is uh, one hundred twenty thousand seven hundred twenty dollars and uh, fifty five cents. Thank you. Uh, I would entertain a motion for referral to the Finance and Budget and Finance Committees. So moved. Second. Motion second. And a second. Any discussion? Yes, Councilor. Uh, just uh, through to the town manager, what uh, kind of monies had we received in the past in comparison? Uh, we've received uh, anywhere between 230 to 260. Wow. In that, in that neighborhood. Don't, don't quote me on those, but yeah. in that neighborhood. That's a significant drop. <laughs> Just a general comment, I find that a little surprising considering from what I've heard, I think um, the correctional facility in Walpole's closing. Mm -hmm. So they're closing that facility and giving us less? It also depends on what the legislature appropriates for that, for that total bucket. So I think, I think that uh, appropriation has gone down and I think our population has gone down as well. So that's part of the formula. Wait, did you say part of the formula? The one that we've Correct. asked that our, no one can, can tell us how that's calculated? I can tell I, you. I would be very cautious saying formula. <laughs> I think more it's darts in the dark, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, yes, Council. Just a question, I'm not sure, probably maybe from Michael through the chair. Um, is there anything we can do with our legislative delegation to see if we can do anything about that? Because that's a significant drop. We have a new state senator representing us and 
our state representative. I, I, I just think we should try to see if we can do anything. Uh, that's a great question. My suggestion, uh, as as is often the case, is I think if the council votes to um, to send a letter to to your state uh, rep and your state senator, um, that's a good start. Um, and then copy the uh, Department of Correction um, officials, appointed political officials. Um, I think that's a good start. And I'm happy to draft a letter for the council's review. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, seeing none, I would ask all those in favor uh, referring this matter to the Finance and Budget and Finance Committees to please say aye. 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 All those opposed? There are none. Thank you. Uh, order FY23-042, Transfer Order uh, Community Preservation Act Old State Farm Trail Project. And um, Mr. Dutton, once again, if you would kindly introduce this matter. Thank you, Mr. President. This is uh, first reading. It's in front of you. It is um, the, uh, to fund a portion of the second phase of, of a four-phase project. Um, and I'll back up and tell you how we came about um, uh, with the uh, prospective ownership of an easement along the uh, town river uh, on DOC property and then uh, along the border of the town uh, or the DOC property back to Summer Street. Um, when the fire academy, uh, which is now uh, situated at the old uh, colony correctional facility uh, was being discussed, we got a call from the state and the state was offering as uh, mitigation um, an easement, a trail easement along the town, <clears throat> town river, both, both head, head ends on, on Summer Street, but from the town river, or crosses town river up and then along the border of the, of the DOC property back to Summer Street. Um, that is what the legislature voted. Um, the only uh, contingency was that we had to uh, fund the, uh, obviously the construction of the trail, but we had to fund the survey to, to do the, uh, to, to identify the trail easement itself. Um, DCAM has uh, identified a surveyor that they uh, will allow us to use. And the expense I believe is in the neighborhood of, uh, memory serves is in the neighborhood of $60,000. Um, the NRTB, Natural Resources Trust of Bridgewater has done some fundraising. Um, and they continue to fundraise to offset the cost of that survey. They've asked the Community Preservation Committee to recommend uh, $40,000 towards that survey. And uh, the Community Preservation Committee, I believe by a four to one vote, uh, voted to, um, voted to uh, make that recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> once this phase is complete, um, the application for trail grant funding um, through, through the state uh, will be able to be completed and they're racing to try to get uh, this spring uh, deadline for, uh, for that, um, that application in so that they can begin phase three of the project um, and begin to lay out the trail. Uh, so I don't, I don't anticipate at this point, it's always possible, I don't anticipate at this point um, that uh, additional funding will come from the town for this uh, trail project, but I do think it's a great project um, and we, uh, as I say, when the, when the fire academy um, came to Bridgewater, uh, the state legislature voted to, to allow the grant of this easement. We just had to pay for the survey. So that's, that's what you have uh, in front of you right now. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Uh, I would entertain a motion for referral to the Budget and Finance and Finance Committees. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Are there any questions? And seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Thank you very much. The, um, the next matter is FY20, order FY23-043, Bridgewater Raynham Regional School District Capital Allocation. Uh, I don't see that the documentation for this uh, order has been furnished in our meeting materials tonight. Anyone uh, offer, <laughs> does anyone find those materials in their packet? Yes, page 102. And I would ask if uh, the town manager has comment. 
I do. This is uh, a little confusing, admittedly, um, but I think the council remembers that we had uh, we had uh, appropriated uh, about a half a million dollars for the uh, construction of the, I believe it was the track at the high school. The and I think I've reported this before. The high school or the school district uh, chose to fund that project with uh, available funds that they had uh, through a variety of different means and uh which meant that they did not fund the uh, the track uh reconstruction with the money that was allocated from bridgewater um understanding that um there was a little confusion between um how the law around how regional school districts can expend capital money and and how the council specifically voted it um we had a conversation with the interim superintendent and the business uh, uh, officer at the school and uh, what we came to was that they would actually return the money that was appropriated by the council but not used for its stated purpose and we would recharacterize the uh, funds and revote uh, according to how that money uh, was spent so we're, we're basically um, basically granting uh, capital funds uh, for the purposes uh, laid out in front of you, uh, mostly all, all involving IT technology upgrades. Um, so that, that was the uh, resolution. That's what we had asked them to do. And that's uh, what in fact they did. So uh, I would certainly recommend uh, forwarding to budget and finance and finance committee uh, for further discussion. Thank you very much. I would entertain a motion for referral to the budget and finance and no, finance no. committees. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Councilor Moore. Maybe a question through you to the, the town manager. Um, is it possible to get some additional just detail about what these line items are, um, just to understand more about what we're voting on? Yep, I think I think we have that actually. I'll forward that along to everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Councilor Wood. Yeah, uh, question. So um, um, I thought they used them for Chromebooks instead of this technology. So is this new, uh, a new technology that's not in existence yet at, at BR? Um, I don't have how so. So the, the, the story I understood was that they did not use the money that we voted on to restore the track and that they actually used the money to buy Chromebooks, but there, there's no Chromebooks on, on this list. So is it, so are they actually returning the money and then making a request for these specific items? Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. We'll talk about it more in committee. Thank you very much. Uh, on the vote, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? I see none. Thank you very much. Mr. Counselor. Proposed ordinance FY23-007, acceptance of local tax option retail marijuana tax. And uh, I would like to turn this over to Councillor Wood for comment. Thank you. Um, just a quick introduction. So in anticipation of retail taxes at some point from uh, retail marijuana sales, uh, the town actually has to set the tax rate and it's specified in, in uh, Mass General Law Chapter 64N to do that, you can set it up to uh, 3%. Um, and so under that law, so I, I say we set it at the maximum and that's what this, this um, ordinance is proposing. Thank you very much. I would entertain a motion for referral to the budget and finance and finance committees. So moved. Second. 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 Motion and a second, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? I see none. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Thank you. Uh, proposed ordinance FY23-008, <clears throat> cash policy retail marijuana tax reserve fund. If I could please once again to Councillor Wood. Sure. Um, in studying how other towns use their tax money, um, sometimes some towns seem to segregate it and use it for a specific purpose. And I talked to a lot of people about, about the possibility of doing that. So um, this is a mechanism for setting, setting up a special reserve account. I, I will say, and you'll learn later, this is not how the money moves into the account. It's actually just setting up the accounts like 
walking into the bank and setting up the account for the reserve fund. There's a part two to this, um, depending on how the discussions go um, with uh, how to actually fund it later later on. And I, uh, I'll make the motion to send this to Budget and Finance and Finance Committee. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I see none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Fair enough. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to um, citizen comments. If there are any citizens who care to address the council, I would invite you to kindly step forward to the podium and introduce yourself and state your street and uh, your street and uh, limit your remarks to no more than three minutes. Are there any members of the public who care to address the council? It appears not. I thank you very much. Uh, council comments. I would like to commence with uh, Councillor Perry, if I may, this evening. Presidential prerogative. I'd like you to kick things off. That's... <laughs> oh, well, uh, that's perfectly fine. Um, number one, certainly I want to thank all those that uh, came out this past Saturday to uh, cast a vote. Um, and certainly appreciate the support to continue uh, my work on the council. So thank you to those that supported me. Um, also want to uh, thank those that came out to help uh, break down the decorations that the Lions Club put out on the common this past weekend. We got them down in record time. We had quite a, quite a bit of help and uh, um, we look forward to putting back up next year. Um, other than that, I again look uh, congratulate my new fellow councillors that are on the board here tonight. Look forward to working with all of you, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, going forward. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Moore. Sure. Um, I think echoing some of the same sentiments. Thank you to the town clerk uh, for running an excellent election, and thank you for everyone else who helped uh, make that happen. Um, also, thank you to all the candidates, and congratulations to everyone uh, that won. Um, congratulations to you on being elected uh, president of the town council. Uh, and also thank you to everybody else for trusting me with the vice president role. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you uh, to district one for electing me as your counselor. Um, beyond the election, I'd also uh, like to congratulate uh, the rainwater players on their 30th anniversary. Um, you may not know, but rainwater players uh, is essentially the, the theater group associated with the high school. Um, it's mostly a volunteer organization, uh, and it's been in operation for 30 years. So this past weekend, they had uh, a fundraiser celebrating those 30 years, and they had participants from Bridgewater, uh, Rainham from Rainwaters, over the past 30 years, come back and repeat performances and, uh, and do a few things like that to help raise money. And I uh, attended it, and I was touched by just how many people that organization has touched. Um, students that move through BR as participants in Rainwater, um, many of them have been out for 20 or 30 years and still cred credit that program with sort of pivotal life changes uh, for them. So uh, I wanted to congratulate them uh, on that 30 year anniversary and also encourage anyone who has not seen a Rainwater show uh, to go see one. Usually when they pop up, you'll see signs around town. Uh, great, great programs, uh, good performances. So uh, congratulations to them. Thank you so much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Wood. Oh, good. All right. Um, I, I want to thank all the voters that came out this, this weekend. Um, and congratulations to my uh, fellow colleagues here. Um, Dennis, who's not here, is the only one that wasn't running for election. Um, so it was a, it was a good, good election. And um, you know, this is a volunteer position. So I appreciate everybody that puts in the time for volunteering and the volunteers that we appoint as we did tonight, um, and because that's really the, the heart and soul of the, of the, uh, of the town and community. Um, uh, I like the rainwater echo. My daughter went through that program, awesome program. Um, I will also point out that Saturday in the middle of the day, I, I went over to high school. It was kickoff for the TJ squared uh, season uh, robotics. The game was announced worldwide. Um, there's usually, there's something like 6,000 teams worldwide. They start from scratch. And they build from the ground up and um, they'll be competing in week one. Week one is important to Bridgewater and Rainham because uh, BR is actually hosting the first week competition. So, um, you know, put it on your calendars. Uh, each match is the most exciting two and a half minutes that you'll ever see in any sport, sporting event, and it happens all day long. Um, and um, 
we help with the lines. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McKinnon. I just want to thank everyone who showed up at the election and especially everyone that voted for me. I didn't think I'd get as many votes as I did, but shaking hands with a lot of you might have helped with that. I'm new to all this, but I'm a fast learner, so hopefully I can do the, what's best for this town in my time being here, and I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Councillor Lindy. I'm very happy to be back here. I'm looking forward to working with all of you, and I also wanted to congratulate the town clerk on a well-run, well-oiled election. Thank you very much. Uh, for myself, I, I certainly want to echo okay, the welcome. I'll go well, after the, I'll go after the, the president. That's perfectly fine. Been, it's your prerogative, oh, Mr. President. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councillor George. I, forgive me. No, Councillor George. Far be it for me to get in the way. Your of comments, progress. please. Um, I'll make this brief. Uh, want to congratulate everyone for being elected, especially the, the new new councillors, uh, Councillor Lindy, McKinnon, and Robinson. Um, looking forward to working with you, and uh, good job for all the volunteers. Very much appreciate um, all the election uh, poll workers think, you know, working for that as well. And uh, even though you broke down the, the common uh, of all the decorations, it still looks good with the light. So very much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I do want to extend congratulations once again to the new members of the council and to the returning members who have survived their reelection uh, campaign. And um, I think it's important to note that the contributions that were made by uh, so many uh, of the staff who, uh, who handled the actual election process uh, at the Mitchell School, uh, I, it's, certainly, uh, it's certainly heartwarming to know that people are willing to work on a, a schedule of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, often with long periods of, um, of boredom, uh, in, in intervening, but nonetheless, they recognize the importance of that duty and uh, every voter in the town owes to them a, a debt of thanks. Uh, and I just uh, wanted to express that. Um, I have no further comments to, tonight, but I uh, am very pleased that we have uh, reconstituted ourselves um, as a council. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased and honored to uh, serve as president for the remainder of this term up until the point of the annual town election in April. And I thank you very much, uh, councilors, for your uh, confidence and support. And uh, congratulations to Councilor Moore as vice president. Um, so I thank you very much. And um, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you.